Take it away, Nick. Thank you so much. Well, um, like any story worth telling, this story starts out with a young black man that's broke, living in the slums of LA. And then the other character is me. Um, I was like, walking outside of a Rite Aid, and I was carrying like chicken and noodles, just my normal diet for being poor. And there's a man that's like, he's, he sleeps like on a bench outside the Rite Aid. He comes up to me, and he says, well, would you spare me some change? I said, no, would you spare me some change? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm only so much further than you are in life right now. That's ridiculous. And so he's like, oh, you're struggling. Uh, well, I know what you can do to get some money. I didn't come to him for financial advice, but I figure, what the hell, I'll listen. So he says, you should become a temp. They make good money and they pay pretty good. My first thought is, well, why aren't you using this advice? But okay, whatever, uh, how do you become a temp? And so he's like, well, you go down to office team in Glendale and you go there first. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll give it a shot. So I take this bus ride, it takes forever. It's like a two and a half hour ride to get to Glendale because I didn't know how to get there. Uh, the first bus was ridiculous. There was like a woman coughing in the front of the bus, just on everybody's hips. She just keeps coughing over and over again. There's a baby crying in the back. I assume the baby was cried on first. And <laughs> it was a ridiculous process, but we finally get, finally get to Glendale and I'm pouring sweat from the long walk. I walk in. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I do a job interview, I lie ridiculously. It's the only way I, I can be qualified for anything. So she's asking me all these questions like, well, do you like people? Of course. You know, do you like to work with others? I'm like, yes. Do you want this job? Sort of. But they yeah, hired me. So I ended up getting the job. And my first, first gig was uh, I was working at H&M doing an inventory job. So what you do is you take a, like a scanner and you just scan the inventory, right? You're just matching up the logs. Easy job. First shift I got was 12 PM to 8 PM. I'm thinking this is perfect. I can wake up at like five in the morning, maybe six in the morning, leave by seven, maybe make it on time. So uh, I ended up getting ready to go and I get a notification through the online profile that I had that said, well, we changed your shift. Instead of 12 to 8 p.m., you're now seven to four a.m. That's not good, that's it's, it's awful. Now, if you ride the bus, you know that there's two times where you can't get a ride. That's right after 1.30 in the morning and then right before six. I'm getting off right in this sweet spot. But I have hope, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe it's possible. If I get off at four, I can maybe wait a little bit, watch a movie on my phone, this will work. So I do the shift, it was fun, met some cool people. The job ends, and they say, oh, by the way, guys, we're gonna let some of you go early. And I'm thinking, well, how early? Uh, and they said, we're gonna let you go at 3 a.m. This is the middle of the worst time to be let go, to go home. There's no way to get home. So I beg and plead to stay a little longer. They said no, and so I leave. And so I think the first thing I do is I'm like, okay, there's a possibility here. I made a couple friends, right? So I start waving at people. I'm like, hey, Karen, can you come in? <laughs> okay, Karen, bye. Uh, I'm like, John, buddy, hey man, can I get a ride home? And then he like rolled up his window. It's just, nobody was helping me out. So I'm stuck, right? And so I go to the bus stop that I rode in on. I wait for about a half hour. Nothing comes. At this point, it's dead. Like there's, there's, there's nothing anywhere. There's nobody, nobody's walking. No, there's, there's not even homeless people out there. And you, they, they, even they had a place to go. That's how bad it was. So I'm waiting and then like the next shift of people gets off. I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's someone. Nobody cared. But I saw a black woman, this young girl, she was like 35 feet away from me. I'm thinking, okay, I have a shot. So I run up to her and I'm like, hey, hey, um, do you have a car? This is the worst thing to say to a woman late at night, carrying bags full of sweat. Like, this is the worst thing to do. But she was cool. She was like, this guy has glasses. I'm sure he's safe. There's no way you can rob me. So she played it cool. She's like, no, uh, I'm waiting on a bus. Now, this sweet moment in, in transit history is where two people who don't know each other become friends to get home. It's exactly how this works. So I said, well, hey, where are you trying to go? She said, Hollywood. I said, me too. So we start walking around using our phones to Google stops. Everywhere we go, there's nobody there. There's no bus coming, anything. Then we got lucky. A taxi cab pulls into a Chase Bank, maybe about a mile from the, from the area. So I see it, I take off running for the taxi. I'm knocking on the windows or whatever, and the guy lowers his window. I'm like, hey, um, can you take us back to Hollywood? He said, no. Well, why, why can't you? You're a taxi, your meter's still running. This dude looked at me and clicked the meter off like, no, I'm not working anymore. Uh, I'm off. Uh, 
good luck. So <laughs> I'm totally screwed and I'm freaking out and I'm like, okay, well, how do we get home? The girl that I'm with has like this bright idea to go to a place that's like seven or eight blocks down the road. She's like, I'll find a ride home. Uh, you should come with me. I'm like, eh, you know what? You're lost too, okay? You're not smarter than me. So you go on your way. Uh, you don't have a plan. So I'm alone. At this point, I'm out of food, I'm out of water, my phone's dying. I'm like, this is the end. So I call my mom and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna die outside of a mall. I love you. Um, don't forget those Pop-Tarts were mine. And so I'm saying all this stupid stuff. And she's like, boy, get off the phone and go find yourself a ride home. So I'll, I'll keep walking. I walk about another mile and a half. And I see a bus pull into a street, right? So it's coming out of another street and I see the back of it. It's starting to unload passengers. And this particular dude, this like one old guy, he was like so old and feeble, like the wind could kill him. And like he, he, he's getting off and he's got a cane. And he's walking and I just see him shaking. And that was the only thing that saved me. I start running, I'm running. It's like he's taking him forever to get off this bus. And then I, got, I was blessed, like he dropped the cane. He just, he just let it go, it was, the cane was free. And it took him at least five minutes to get down in that position to get that cane. In that moment, I was able to kind of get behind him and I, somehow I still tapped and got on the bus before he did. I don't know how I pulled that off, but I got on the bus and I said, where does this go? And the, the bus driver was just being, you know, smart ass. He was like, it goes south. I'm like, fine. So I ride it and we, we get towards, like, we, get, we go south. And I'm looking around. Mind you, I'm new to L.A., so I don't really know where I'm at. But I saw, like, Capitol Records and I saw a couple other places. I'm like, okay, these are landmarks. I'm close enough. So he lets me off. And the weird thing about riding the bus at this, at this time of the night is there's nothing but like goblins and ghouls and just stuff you see on like Halloween 4 riding the bus right now. Like it's, it's terrible. There's like, there's like a woman, she's singing. There's no music, there's nothing. She's just singing to her hand for no reason. She's just looking at her hand and she's singing. There's a dude slapping sticky notes on people's faces for whatever reason. Sticky notes have nothing on them. And the bus driver's just whistling and like nothing's happening behind him. He's not, he's not helping anyone. I'm, ter I'm six foot five and I'm shaking, terrified, hoping I can get home. And so he drops me off somewhere and I ask him, I was like, hey man, look, you know, I know I'm from one grown man to another. Can you tell me how to get home? And he was totally shocked that I asked him that, but he's like, yeah, just walk here, walk there, catch this bus. I finally did, I got close to my house and I was so thankful because I, had to, I got to call my mom back and say, hey mom, I'm not gonna die, but I need you to send me more money. And <laughs> that's it. Thanks, guys.